Hey, it works now. Great. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Um, I have just built myself a new computer, so I've been trying to get that all set up. I'm on Windows 11 now, which I'm finding very annoying instead of Windows 10. I'm just trying to get everything reinstalled and set up and drivers are not working and it's all annoying. But here we are. Now I'm recording successfully, I think. I hope. Um, it has been a little bit. I've been lazy about getting this video recorded. Uh, this is going to be a recap of the Battle to End Alzheimer's GT that took place, oh man, a hot minute ago. When was it? March 16th. So it's been almost a month. Um, I played Slaves to Darkness, which I talked about before in some other videos. Um, other things that have gone wrong lately, um, I got a text from somebody at the venue uh, like two days ago saying I left a book there. And I was like, great, cool, I'll come pick it up sometime soon. And I was just looking for my book with all of my notes in it, and it turns out I think that that is the book that I left at Tables and Towers. So I'm going to be doing this from memory. I don't have all my notes, so I'm not going to be able to tell you what all battle tactics I did every turn and all of that. So it'll be a, a little bit of a shorter video than perhaps a usual recap. Um, but I want to get this recorded and not wait any longer. Um, so I don't want to wait until I, I pick up my little book of notes. So we're doing it live. Screw it. Uh, that is the wrong round. Let's go to round one to start. Um, if you want to know my list, you can see it in another video. But just to recap, it's a Karkadrak, a Demon Prince, a Chaos Lord, a Chaos Sorcerer Lord, a Chariot, 10 Knights of Nurgle, Corvus Cabal, 2x10 Warriors of Nurgle, and 10 Chosen of Slanesh. And it is a 5 drop, because it's a Battalion and a Warlord. Uh, yeah, so that's the list. Um, so round one, I played against Joseph Espinoza with Slaves to Darkness, so it was a mirror map, match, mirror match, not map, wow. Um, so he had Bellicor, Sorcerer, Lord, six Varengard of Corn as the general, five knights of Nurgle with the banner, six Varengard of Nurgle with spears, and then nine Untamed Beast and five allied flesh hounds. Um, I was I was slightly worried going in just because I was like, you know, whatever. Two two by six Varengard is always a little bit scary, but I've also faced two by six Varengard before, and I felt like I kind of know what to do. They're actually not as scary <laughs> as I initially thought, um, especially if you can get them pinned and like, you know, with the fell spear if they don't charge you, they're not that scary. So this was on. Let's pull this up. Oh my gosh, these, I don't understand these Windows 11 things that are happening. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, here we go. All right. So this was on the little Z deployment, which I believe is every step is forward. You can see my brain is not in like Warhammer mode right now <laughs> at all. Um, so. I was also very, man, I, I, I'm just, this is going to be a terrible, terrible recap report. Um, let me turn down my mic gain just a little bit. That looks a little bit better. Um, so I was also very bad about taking pictures uh, in this, this tournament. I also had kind of been intending to take selfies with some of my opponents, um, which I only remembered once. Um, so, you know, you'll see one picture of me and my opponent. Um, this was, this must have been on turn, this must have been like bottom of two. So essentially what happened in this game, it was a pretty straightforward game, and um, Joseph, Joe, I don't remember if he goes by Joe or Joseph, I'll just say Joseph since that's what's on the roster. Um, Joseph told me before the game, he was like, hey, I'm very new, so like after the game, give me some hot tips, like, tell me what you think I did wrong, whatever, like, he didn't come into this expecting to win the game, which, I don't know, it's always a downer, but, like, realistic if you're new and you're at a tournament and you're facing, like, experienced people, so, um, I will, I will tell you all what I told him, <laughs> essentially, after the game, um, we can see here, um, 
he took first, so he won the roll off and took first, which I think was a mistake one, because um, obviously two by six Varigard, um want to be charging things, not getting charged, um, and he took first and like moved up to take the points, and then that put him in a position where I could charge and pin the Varengard with my various tough things that they were not going to escape from. Um, so yeah, he he took first and like moved up onto this point, this point. He had the flesh hounds over here, and then um, his unit of untamed beast had. So these Varengard were like, can I draw? Let's draw. Let's draw. Draw in the things. Let's see. I think green will stand out here. So yeah, his Varengard. It's tiny. Uh, give me like a big brush. That's uh, still tiny. Oh my gosh, how can I make this bigger? This new new paint here uh, on Windows 11. It's let me down. Anyway, whatever. His very guard were like here. And that's not even on my screen, apparently. Yeah, so apparently OBS is not picking up my whole screen either. What a disaster, friends. What a disaster. It's like this is the first time I've ever done this. All right, so now you can kind of see that. Uh, so his Varigard were here, and he kind of put his Untamed Beast in this long line, like this way. Basically, I think just to cap this point. So he had he had two points. Really, really, he only needed two points to get his max score that battle round, right? Because I had uh, one. I forget. Can you start with one? In this battle plan, I may have had zero. You might you might not start on any in this battle plan, but anyway, two two or three would have three three really would have been enough. So, and he had flesh hounds up here, so he did not need to extend the untamed beasts all the way out to like take the fourth point. He didn't need all four points uh, at all. He could have set the untamed beasts up as just a screen for the vanguard, right? Like here. But instead, what happened is since they were up here my 10 knights got a turn one charge off on the untamed beasts and were able to like end up you know farthest guy was probably here and then pile in three inches to just like tag the varengard in combat and i was like all right cool that unit of varengard is handled like they're never going to get anywhere this game because they're never going to kill 10 nurgle knights when they didn't charge even with the double fight they're just never going to chew through that um, and I had, you know, I had the Demon Prince and the Character Act there to back them up if I needed. Um, then he had put his, his five Nurgle Knights in this position here behind this impassable terrain, and they were close enough that my Nurgle Warriors got into them. So I was like, all right, there's unit number two. That is never leaving. These two are just going to duke it out for the rest of eternity and never hurt each other. And then I believe... So I, I got the one to double, which I took. I believe what happened over on that flank is that um, I think the other Nurgle Warriors got up maybe with the chariot. It might have just been the Nurgle Warriors. Got into the Flesh Hounds on this point. So you, you can see the, the moral of the story here is that he took turn one and he put everything way too close to me and I was able to charge him and his army wants to charge me. Um, so we don't need to get too much more detail than that. But yeah, the the warriors got like the flesh hounds and maybe the chariot helped or maybe the chariot was just over here doing, um, over here on the flank doing um, first round and destroy, I forget. Um, but either way, um, Oh, and then Bellacor, on his turn one, Bellacor, the Slanesh Chosen. And then, then since I took the double, um, I failed to move both turns, so they were just kind of chilling back here <laughs> for the first two turns. Um, but yeah, so with the double, the the other Nurgle Warriors were then able to get over here into these Varengard. And at that point, I was just like, alright, like, your Varengard are just kind of stuck, like, you're, you're going to have to use the double fight just to, like, get the Nurgle Warriors killed here and free yourself. Like, it, it, it was just a mess for him. And 
then once the um, once the chosen could finally move because Bellicor were off, you know they just did their eleven inch run up here, did run and charge from the Lord, and got into the the Varengard as well. So yeah, the the story was just I pinned the Varengard off, you know, on these two points. So I just always had the other two points, and then I was able to outcount them down here. So I was always getting um, one, two more, and getting my battle tactics, and his army was stuck and couldn't do anything. So I won that game. Uh, don't save. So round two was against Don. Yes, Don Lushner with Gloom Spike Gets. Don was a great guy. Um, he's the one I got a selfie with. Um, whoa, that's that's just a great picture, isn't it? Let's zoom out here. There we go. That's me and Don. Hooray at Tables and Towers. Um, so yeah, it was great to play him. I'd seen him at tournaments, and he was like, "Oh, I've seen you around at tournaments and stuff too, but I haven't gotten to play you." And like, excited for this game, which is it's it's always good. It's always nice to start off on a good foot for a game, and like, have somebody who's friendly and cheerful and is like excited for. It. Um, so that was cool. Um, let's pull up. So this game, this is game was another one where chosen got to cho or got to um, charge things, which is always bad for the things that chosen charge because chosen are good, especially when they have the plus one attack banner on the charge. Um, so this was whatever. It was this one that has three things in the middle. You know what it is, viewers. <laughs> uh, your brain, your brain works better than mine. Oh my god, this is just, this is just a mess. I'm gonna have to figure this out before I record the next video. Um, whatever. All right, you can see most of this. Come on, come on, Windows 11. Come on, OBS. Work with me here. All right, that's a little better. Oh, where is it? Here we go. We're doing this live. It's a whole mess. It's a whole thing. All right. I don't know. I don't know why OBS isn't like recording my whole screen. I, this is this is crazy. Um, all right. So you can see. Here we go. Let's see if I can get a good sized brushy thing again. Fingers crossed. Um, all right. So he was playing. Let's go to his list. Like I said, Gloom Spike gets in the Trug, Trog Herd faction. Unfortunately, after having played this a couple times and having played the Mega Mob like Trog list, um, I think Mega Mob is just like straight superior to Trug. Trug is cool and fluffy, but it's not very like his sub faction is not very good. Um, so he had Trog Boss General. He had Trug. He had nine Rock Guts. Three three Rock Guts. And then three single dank holds, and the moon shrine. Um, so looking at this list, I'm like, all right. The the only thing that's like super scary here, or really scary at all, turns out, uh, is the nine rock guts. Especially if they get like the plus one attack, all out attack from the dank hold. So I said in my head, like those nine rock guts can only stand on one point at a time. They can't be everywhere. So I just I think I think this game I can just take whatever two points the nine rock guts are not on, and then just win by getting one two more, um, and that is basically what happened. Um, as you can see I have warriors chosen over here, I have the knights, the prince, the other warriors over there. Off on the flanks are surely some uh, things to get surrounded and destroy. So I think the Karkadrak was on the right, and the chariot was on the left. Um, which I maybe should have done the opposite. I had a couple games where I was like, ah, I wish I'd put them on opposite sides. Um, but whatever. So, so Demon Prince and those two were set up to get Surround and Destroy turn one, which was generally what I was setting up for. Um, Sorcerer was in this big garrison, all by his lonesome. Uh, and then you can kind of see here, this was the nine Rock Guts. There's three and a dank hold, there's three and a dank hold, and then Trug's behind there, and then the Trog boss is somewhere in there. And 
And essentially what happened, he moved his three rock guts and a dank hold up here. He had a dank hold and like trug over here and then like the nine rock guts. I have more pictures of this. I don't know why I'm just telling you. <laughs> Let's actually pull it up. Zoop. I thought I had... Wow, this is not zooming well. All right, so let's just start with this one. All right, so yeah, here, basically, turn one, he had moved up some stuff over here. Give me, give me the good one. Here we go. He moved some guys up over here, which then the Slanesh Chosen got in and killed both the three Rock Guts and the Dankhold on that flank. Uh, and then he had three rock guts and a dank hold over here, which the knights charged, and I believe the knights killed the dank hold on that side. So he was immediately like, oh man, <laughs> if I lose a dank hold, I'm feeling bad, and I lost both dank, or two dank holds out of three, turn one, plus, plus three rock guts, which, you know, theoretically could come out of the loon shrine, but wasn't too worried about that. Uh, and then, yeah, I was just trying to ignore the nine rock guts right now in the middle um so i got you know i got the two outside points to get more things were looking pretty decent i left these warriors back here to kind of i don't know i was trying to figure out how to do, how i wanted to deal with the the nine rockets uh don't save then there's there's like one, there's one other picture i want to show for this right so the nine rockets then went this was he was he was already he was already real down by this point, but um, he he went with the nine rock guts into the Nurgle knights and did not kill them. Like he he might have killed like one or two, but they're Nurgle knights with the banner, so they're very tough. Um, but then he left he left Trug here, like on this point. He was kind of I don't know. I think he was kind of indecisive on what to do with Trug, and he left them. He left Trug. Um, in range of the <laughs> the Slanesh chosen, so Trug had a bad time next turn. Um, the Slanesh eight the the Slanesh chosen eight Trug uh, in the next turn, and essentially then so so at that point it's like basically just the nine rock guts and the Trog boss maybe, although I may have gotten the Trog boss with the Demon Prince, um, but essentially it ended up with a big old uh, CF of everything is this the one right yeah so here here you can see the the slanesh and the demon or the, the chosen the demon prince went into trug and smoked him because he didn't even have a ward save um the knights had like retreated out to get retreat and charge for a tactic so <laughs> there's you know there's just a nine trolls here and in my turn i got the double so the chosen went into the rock guts the Demon Prince went into the Rock Guts to turn off the ward save. The Knights went back into the Rock Guts, and all the Rock Guts died. Um, so that was that game. So, yeah, I the, like I said, I had faced the Mega Mob before, which has some of like the Goblin Casters and Scragrot, and that list had um, Jake's list had Jake Nicky, I believe, um, had three by six Rock Guts, which felt I don't know that felt better to me than the nine nine three three so i think if this had been like six six three maybe it would have felt a little better um because yeah it, like that like i'm not scared of three rock guts with with anything in my army really um so i was just able to to avoid the nine until i was ready to deal with them so at that point i was two one and they were both big wins um Round three, I was against Blaine with Astral Templars. Um, I don't have any monsters, so Astral Templars does nothing for him in this matchup. Um, although I have, I don't blame him for taking Astral Templar, certainly. Like, I've been playing around with maybe Astral Temp Templar lists um, because the meta here is so heavy with, like, Stonehorns. There's a lot of monsters. Um, so I, yeah, I, I'd specifically been making like Astral Templars lists to try and kill Stonehorns. <laughs> um, so he had a Night Encanter with Blizzard, an Imperitant, Allied Severith, 
um, a Lord Relictor with translocation, of course, uh, two Vanguard Hunters and a unit of Vanquishers for the battle line. Then he's got four Tempesters, which are always scary, two units of Grand Hammers, again, which are always scary, and a unit of Long Strikes, which are scary. So, so all this stuff, I know, can do some damage and is a little bit scary. He was a bunch of drops. Um, do I have a picture of this one? I don't, I don't even think I have a picture of this game. <laughs> 2 0, I was like focused, um, trying to play, uh, play very well. This was on, um, this was unlimited resources, the one where you can siphon the meltwater. So this was like the most tactical, hard thinking game of the weekend for me. Uh, probably, you know, probably for everybody because limited resources is so weird and different. Um, I think he had only played it once, and he or uh, once or twice, and he was like, "Ah, oh, I, you know, I hate this mission. <laughs> I don't know what to do on this mission, or like, I've never went on this mission. Whatever, blah blah blah." And I'm like, "Yeah, I, I understand. Like, it's it's just it's weird to think about the fact that you hold a point two and two turns in a row, and then you can't score it anywhere. It's just like more to plan for long term." Um, I was pretty comfortable on the mission, although I immediately messed up because I messed up in a way that ended up being better for me, I think. Um, I'd meant to leave something off of the second point in my territory to deploy, and I accidentally just stuck my chariot on it at the end of deployment <laughs> over on the side to get surrounded and destroy. Um, but we were talking afterwards, and um, I think it was Bill Hennessy was also, or maybe it was Corey, I think Corey. Um, was talking about how he thinks he's like, oh, of course you stand on both points because then if the other person takes first turn, then they have to get three to get more rather than just, you know, get two and then they, they have, you know, they're not standing on three, they, they haven't started the clock ticking on three, they've only started on two so I, I came around to I came around, came around to thinking that that is, that is the correct call is especially if you know that you're going to be able to give them first just stand on both your points, and then um, they're gonna have to take three, and then you know, turn two, all three of those are gonna be turned off for them. Um, and you you have you might have a little more play, can can mess with things a little more. Um, yeah, Blaine's cool, Blaine's Blaine's good, um, but was new to this army, and I think new to Stormcast specifically. Um, so was not super experienced with the army. Um, it was a super, it was a very tactical game. Um, had a couple unlucky things happen for him and a couple mistakes, I think. Um, I was like very proud of the way that I played this game. This, this was like, this was I think my best game I've had in a while. Um, but he unfortunately, I think turn one, I think he did Magic Dom turn one and Primal Miscast with the Imperitant. I think it was the Imperitant. Uh, and I think failed the tactic because of it. So he, he like, because I think I had dispelled, no. I think he Primal Miscast with the Imperitant, which killed one of the Vanguard Raptors. And he had, I, I'm, I'm, all right, sorry, pause. I'm not I'm not disparaging Blaine in any way when I say this, but this game was a very good example of how important it can be to like know the rules of your opponent's army as well as yours, and that is something that is a huge advantage for people who play a lot and play like a lot of different armies against and, and like with and against different armies is just knowing the rules of your opponent's army. So in no way was Blaine trying to cheat. Like I said, Blaine was new to this army and he just like had a couple things wrong in his head. There's a bajillion rules in AOS, like it happens. Um, but it, anyway, so the, the point is his primal miscast did two wounds to the Vanguard Raptors and he just like stuck a die down with the two or whatever. And I was like, that dude's dead. And he's like, oh no, the, the Vanguard Raptors have, have three wounds. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry they don't. They've got two. <laughs> I play, you know, I play with them all the time. Every time I bring out the Stormcast, you gotta have some long strikes. Uh, so I was like, oh, sadly they only have one. So right off the bat, his primal miscast killed one long strike, and two long strikes is, you know, turns out 50% math, whatever. <laughs> it's two thirds as scary as three long strikes. Um, 
so like I was very happy right off the bat that one of the three long strikes was dead um and that was actually he he did that before he was going to use the double shoot um command on them so he he basically lost four shots out of 12 that turn with the long strikes because of that primal miscast and then i think his other i think one or both of his wizards were actually in range of my unbinds and that was why he tried to throw the primal at the first one um so i think i think after the imperative miscast i was able to dispel the encanter spell so he failed um magic dom turn one um so you know obviously a bad start right off the bat to to drop your tactic turn one um but he didn't i don't think he really felt like he had a good other like turn one tactic so he, he was like it's kind of risky but he risked it um, and it just didn't work out. I think I did the same, I might have done the same thing. I might have risked the magic dom and just, you know, only cast with one thing, even though I was in unbind ranged, and when I got it, it just stopped casting. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, this was, this was a little bit of a tricky game, just because the vanguard hunters could teleport, um, but I had the Karkadrak with the crown, so he could stand on a point, and the vanguard hunters couldn't even contest it. And, like, they're not going to kill the Karkadrak. Um, so so I had, like, that in my back pocket, which actually came up. This was, like, the only game where it was either relevant or I remembered to really use the Karkadrak and the, the Conqueror's Crown well. Um, so, like, it, like, late, like, later turns, that, that, it was actually very important in the later turns when a couple of his, a couple of the object, like, three or four of the objectives were turned off for him, and then the Karkadrak just went and stood on one that he could get, and I was just like, no, I can't contest it at all with your Vanguard Hunters, sorry. Um, the other rule I was happy I had been messing with making Astral Templars lists and like Vanguard Hunters and Vanguard Paladors recently um, was that he thought the Vanguard Hunters could teleport out of combat. Um, and it's actually the Vanguard Hunters, it's instead of a normal move, the Palladors, the mounted guys, is instead of a normal move or a retreat. Um, so the Palladors can bounce out of combat, but the Vanguard Hunters can't. So there there was a moment where I'd, I think I'd asked, I think I'd even asked previous, like, oh, can they teleport out of combat? Like, can they retreat teleport? And he was like, yeah, they can. I was like, I, was like, I don't think that sounds right. But like, I wasn't going to look it up right then. And then like, a situation came up where like he was going to do it and i was just like that still doesn't sound right and i was like really so i'm a little frustrated with my with myself because i was like when i first doubted it i should have just looked it up then so that we both had it straight going forward i shouldn't have waited until it mattered and because i waited until it mattered to check and i was right it can't teleport out of combat I, like I did try and give him the opportunity to be like, hey, if you want to, like, take something back with, like, if you want to take something back, like, rejig or something, do something different with them, um, like, if you would have done something different knowing that now, like, I, I offered that he could, he could do something else and take something back or, like, pick another tactic or something, you know, whatever. And, um, his, you know, he, he basically was like, I don't know, like, it's my mistake, it's, it's fine. Um, what else was important in this game? The Tempesters are scary. The, the like, every hit turns into two hits if they're shooting is gross. Um, it surprises me every time. I'm like, how is that a rule? <laughs> but, um, this was game three of three where, um, the Chosen got to charge important things, <laughs> which leads to me winning games. Um, so the Chosen got a charge off on the Tempesters, after um i think warriors went in to eat the unleash hell and then the um chosen went in and with a double fight i think i killed them to like the exact wound so it was very close um so yeah so i got those um the grand hammers did get in and killed my sorcerer lord and i like i messed up my screening and they got in and killed the sorcerer lord like they killed a one or two other things, and then um, 
they're slow though. So like once they're down, um, I was able to deal with them essentially. Um, oh, and the other big thing was Severith. So Severith is a big pain in the ass. Like he's so fast. He was just bouncing around being a dick for the first turn. And then turn two, what was it? I think it was turn two. It was turn, it must've been turn two. Um, whatever. It was turn two or three. He did let into the maelstrom and he charged in Severith and he charged in the Vanquishers, I think. And he like charged Severith into the Chosen and then he can like bounce out. Like I, I think he can just like pile in six inches, but he doesn't have to be closer, so he can pile away six inches or something. Whatever, he's annoying and slippery. Um, but he chose to stay in combat with the Chosen, with Severith, and they just, like, smoked him. Um, so, and I think, uh, I don't remember if the Vanquishers lived that turn. He maybe... I think maybe the Vanquishers died, and he was like, oh crap, now I have to leave Severith in. But I was like, Severith is not going to survive the Chosen fighting him. I was like, they're going to vaporize Severith. Um, so I think he may have failed Led in as well, because neither of them were in combat at the end of the turn. Because um, I killed Severith. I, I could be mis misremembering, and he got it because the Vanquishers, or the Hunters, were like still in combat. But in that case, I don't know why he would have left Severith in. This may have just been like a brain fart moment, or like a, oh, I didn't realize that the Chosen were just going to smoke him moment. So, I, I, I don't remember exactly, but I'd been very worried about Severith, because I was like, there's no way, there's no way that I can catch Severith, right? And, like, ever deal with him, except for him feeding him to me and just sacrificing him. And so... That 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 made the game that made the rest of the game a lot easier. Um, I think the only other notable thing is again like turn four or five. This game was very close and was like real cagey. Uh, and like I said, I was I was pretty proud of the way I played. But I I think the I think the Nurgle Knights were down to like three models from like shooting and maybe annihilators and stuff. Um, but lived and like got out of whatever they were in whatever mess they were in and um i got them up towards the middle of the board and rallied like two back uh and that got them a little closer and i was able to um i was able to do a tactic then with them to get them Right. The stupid thing was I had I had removed the banner with the way I had been allocating wounds, so I didn't have the banner to get the tactic to get the banner into his territory. <laughs> like a dumbass. Um, but I was able to rally two back, so I rallied the banner back, and then um, I ended up being close enough I could get the charge off on the Imperitant, um, which killing him stopped his Grand Strat, so he didn't get his Grand Strat. Um, I believe I didn't get mine either. I think he got my Chaos Lord. Um, but yeah, it, it was just, it was a big, it was a big thing, a, a big swing that, like, I rallied the two knights back, that got them closer, they got into the territory to get the tactic, and then they also killed the Imperitant, um, to stop his Grand Strat, so that was, like, five points right there. Um, so yeah, it was a very good game. Um, so at the end of day one, I was 3-0, and I was in first place, because my first two wins were, like, 18-point wins. So I was, like, feeling good, I was, like, there's a shot, like, I could go all the way, uh, but also in the back of my head, I was like, alright, I'm gonna be facing some, some killers <laughs> today, too, um, you know, your, your Jacobs, your Bills, your, your Emmas, um, so there were, like, I think there were seven three O's, and then Emma was two O and one, I think she had a draw, um, so I paired down into Emma, which I was like, oh no. <laughs> I just have this like mental block of like, I, like my very first tournament playing AOS, Emma just like kicked my ass. So, so I have this like mental block, I think, where I'm like, oh no, she's going to kill me again. Um, so, you know, I was, I was a little intimidated. Also, I mean, you know, she, play, she played on the world 
you know, the U.S. World's team, yada, yada, yada. Like, she's very good. It's not like I'm crazy for... Oh, come on, BCP. It's not like I'm crazy for being like, oh, Emma's good at this game. This is going to be hard. Um, so she was playing um, Nurgle with the Glotkin. Morbidex twice born, one of the big monsters. Blow up another one of the big monsters. Uh, the Harbinger of Decay, who, oh my god, turned out to be way better than I thought it was. Um, two by ten play bearers, Routemeyer Creed, Nurglings, Furies, Furies. Cool. Um, I made I made like one huge mistake this game. I think this is the right. Tell me why why does this start so zoomed out? Right, that's game five. Windows eleven. I regret everything. Um, <laughs> yeah, this, this this is where you can see the game is over at this point. Um, and where is just like my grab hand? All right. So you can see the game is basically over at this point because I have like chosen and warriors left, and he's standing on the points. Or, sorry, she's standing on the points. Um, so, yeah, it, basically the big mistake this game was... Emma gave me first. I, like, moved up and just, like, towed a couple points, just barely. I was trying to stay away from the Glotkin, obviously. Um, and I was trying to set up so that if I got doubled, like, she wouldn't get into the Chosen, like, the, hoping they were behind... Like, I was hoping, I, you know, I moved the Warriors up to kind of screen, and I was hoping that, um, you know, they were, they were kind of, like, here. Um, the Karkadrak had gone off over here because Emma was weak on this flank. It was basically, like, Furies were over here, and maybe, maybe R Rottmeyer Creed or, like, Plague Bearers could come over, but I was like, I can just turn off them contesting this objective and take it. Also, this was Pulse. I should mention this was on the Pulse. Um, so I was like, right, like, Karkadrak handles that, this is like impassable, he can kind of do his own thing over here, and then I had the knights, the knights were like here, and then the Chosen were there. So I was like, I'm gonna try and move up just a little bit, and get the points, I'm gonna screen out these guys, and hope that if Emma has the double, that I can handle that, and then like, you know, maybe get the double back. So... She went, she like moved up a little bit, you know, she moved up a little bit enough to like take the points back from me, etc. Um, and then I won the prio and I was like doubting myself in my head. I was like, oh no, like what if I do give her the double and she gets in and it, I still don't know I still don't know if it was that bad of a decision what I ended, what I ended up doing, but what I was scared of, so I had tried to set up to take the double, to, to have her take the double and me eat the double and, like, be okay. But what I was worried about, because Nurgle is so tanky, is I was worried that she was just going to, like, pin me back here where my little lines are, and then I was not going to be able to, like, take the middle points back. Like, she was going to be tanky enough that I was not going to be able to get past her back onto the points to, like, get control of the points. I should have just trusted my plan, and that, you know, the Chosen can just murder everything with the Demon Prince turning off wards, like the whole plan was in the first place. But I, like, I just got my own head, and I, like, didn't want to think about it too long, because, like, I don't want to take too long. So I just got my own head, and I was like, I'll take the turn. This is the stupidest mistake. It, 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 it was so dumb. It, I should have just gone with my first plan and been confident that it was a good one, but I wasn't. So I took the turn, and what makes this even more dumb is this is Pulse. So then she got to decide that, you know, the, uh, she decided, she got to decide that the Pulse comes in over here on the left, whereas if it came in, let me move this, ah, no, wrong one, there we go. Yeah, whereas if it came in over here on the right, like, she can't take it back from me. The Karkadrak is sitting there. Like, Furies can't take it. Plague Bearers can't take it. The Karkadrak is on the point. So, oh, yeah, what was I thinking? I, it was just, I just doubted myself. I had a derpy moment. And, like, that just 100% lost me the game. Like, yeah, I was just, I, it was terrible. I was screwed. Um, all my stuff also died, like, way faster than I expected against the Nurgle monsters and, like, Glotkin. Um, 
so yeah, everything died faster than I expected. Um, I also got totally got screwed by the Glotkin once. Um, I had right, I had led into the Maelstrom set up with like the Chariot over here and the Demon Prince, and I forgot that like even though the Glotkin was in combat. Like, the Glotkin can still issue a charge to something, even though he can't charge. So so I just got Glotkin charged by this little summoned guy with a blizzard up there, and I was just like, oh my god. Like, guys. Everything went from bad to worst. I got, I got crushed. Um, I made a really, you know, I made one really big stupid mistake. Um, the game was probably going to still be close. Like, I definitely was not at all guaranteed to win. Um, but like I made one stupid big mistake and Emma's like a phenomenal player so <laughs> you can't make a giant mistake and then then come back against a really good player so yep I lost that one 17-3 that was a horrible big loss because the points can rack up on um, pulse very quickly with getting your you know two points for the pulse one each for the two next to the pulse one for an objective so you can have like a few seven point turns so yeah big big loss to emma and then round five um this was a closer game against basil and ferreira uh with coalesced um quaddle's claw obviously he had croak a star seer an astrolith bearer so like not the this was to me an unexpected hero well it was a whole unexpected list but it was an unexpected hero loadout for coalesced then he had 10 Source Guard, 2x10 Warriors, and 9 Croxigors. And then he's got a 5 Hunters of Huanchi with Star Tome Bolas, which I love, and a Grave Tide. So, gosh, the, the story of this game is basically just Croak getting his Make Something Strike Last off, like, every single turn, and just ruining my entire life <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> Um, so let's just pull up this picture. This is, this is deployment, I think. This was on no reward without risk, so we could be all close to each other. Um, so this pick is super blurry. This is terrible. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> they're just continuing the theme of everything being a mess with this. Uh, so Croak was way in the back. Um, the Star Seer. There's the little, like, coalesced slingshot thing where you can like do the teleport coalesce spell but like go through the other whatever i don't know there's some teleporting shenanigan you can do to get croak up um it's got the source guard warriors warriors and then the nine croxagore um this was worse for me than i thought it would be just because my two hammers the knights are hammers, light. They're more of, I don't know, there's a, they're, they're handful. Um, but whatever, my hammer is, my big hammer, my chosen are two damage. So I'm doing 50% damage right off the bat because they're coalesced, which is still bullshit. Um, but it was a close game and the, the, the moment, I think the moment that I lost the game was I had, we were being a little cagey for the first turn or two and then his Croxigors had moved up a little bit to like here, and these the Saurus Warriors were like here. Um, so I was like, all right, my plan, I was like, War my, my Nurgle Warriors can go over here. Maybe they fight over this objective with the Saurus, but like that doesn't matter too much. He's not gonna get to this objective for me. And he's not gonna get, he's not gonna get to this objective and he's not gonna get to this objective. So I need to take one or both of the top and the middle. And like I, I wasn't really worried about this one. I just was stopping him from getting to my bottom one. So I was like, all right, like the Nurgle warriors can go up and the Chosen can go up and they can fight through um, some Saurus warriors. And then I had the Nurgle knights go around here and I had the Karkdrak go up here. And what I should have done and didn't was just get both of them. Let's see, the 
lines are proliferating too much. <laughs> I should have just moved both of them as close to the cross scores as I could and risked the redeploy. Um, but I was very, I was like very nervous that he was going to like get the five or six inch redeploy and be able to cram back and I would not get the charges off. And then like he was going to charge me and everything was going to be terrible. Um, so what I did instead is I just went up and stayed outside of nine inches. Um, I think I had three D six charge on the Knights. I probably should have put that on the Karkadrak. Um, I was not accounting in any of this for the thing that ended up fucking me. So what happened, what ended up happening, long story short, is the knights went into the Kraxagoras, they got the charge off, the Karkadrak failed his rerollable 9-inch charge, which, you know, it's only like a 48% chance, it's not unheard of, like, it happens. Um, and then Croak was sitting within range, to go pew pew oh i rolled an eight you strike last and i was like what i was like croak croak makes things strike last like i thought croak just blows things up apparently croak makes things strike last so <laughs> instead of the karkadrak who strikes first and then triggers the knights to attack after him going in and like okay minus one damage like i'm, I'm at half damage but like I should probably kill, you know, whatever. I should kill like two or, th even if I kill two or three Croxagors, that is incredibly helpful for the amount of damage that'll be coming back on the Knights. Um, so instead what happened is because the Karkadrak didn't make it, the knight struck last, and the Croxagors went first, and the Croxagors killed, like, I think the Croxagors killed six or seven Knights. They might have killed seven knights. Like, the the rolling was also just terrible. I was on, like, I was on Mystic Shield and all out defense. I was on I was on two up saves against everything. And I just, you know, I failed like I failed like four two up saves against his three damage attacks. So there's three knights gone. And then or no, four knights gone, sorry. And then I failed like I failed like three or four saves against the um Two damage attacks. So I rolled, you know, I rolled like eight ones. And like, you know, in my head, I'm like, two up saves, you always make those. And I'm like, oh, nope, turns out, like, you can roll ones and just get shit on sometimes. Um, so then the bites, like, maybe killed another one. And then the last, like, two or three battle shocked off. And this was a moment where... So I told a story from Worlds where I was like, the giant player forgot he was on Mystic Terrain, and I was all sad about him wanting to make his award saves, and he was like, dude, don't be a dick, like, I let you take something back earlier, and I was like, fine, make your award saves for your giant. So this was the point in this game where I was like, this, this probably just lost me the game, but... Uh, I, I remembered, I was like, oh, like, in addition to this being terrible in every way, like, I had, I had the Sorcerer Lord 6-up ward on the Knights. And I was like, I was like, dude, I, like, do you mind if I, I take those ward saves? And it was way too late. And I told him, I was like, look, like, I will, I will not be mad at all if you do not let me take them. Like, I'm very sad because my whole unit of Knights that I thought was going to be impossible for you to kill just died in one turn and evaporated <laughs> but like but like i'm not i'm not gonna be mad like you're, it's within your rights to be like no you can't take your saves now like we're past that and he was like eh, 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 take them so i was like thank you thank you basil you good man you beautiful man so i took my ward saves and like you know i made enough so that instead of six knights dying it was like four knights dying and that meant that instead of the whole unit battle shocking off like one more guy battle shocked off so i had like you know, i had like four knights left instead of zero <laughs> so it's still bad because i was like i should have killed some croc like if i didn't strike last and the character got in like okay the crocs were harder to kill not even harder to kill than i thought they did more damage than i thought to the knights 
But I was like, if I had gotten a strike before them, with the knights alone, much less the knights and the Kargadrak, I probably would have killed one or two crocs, maybe three if the Kargadrak goes in, and then that's less damage coming back to me, so less knights die, and like, just the whole game looks different. So yeah, so like, that to me, like that failed Kargadrak charge, just to me, I'm like, that, that lost me the game. Like, it was a coin flip, 50-50, whether that Kark made it in, and he didn't, and sometimes you have to take those. Um, but, like, I wasn't thinking about the croak strike last thing, so, like, that that just made the, the failed charge even worse. So I was big sad about all of that. Um, other, the other, like, the rest of the map was more competitive, <laughs> more heavily fought over. Uh, the Chosen, like, killed the Tensaurus Warriors, and he was like, wow, I've never seen Tensaurus Warriors on a point, like, die that fast through their, like, three-up, two-up save with all that defense. Um, so I'd smoked the Warriors in the middle, and so he ended up sending, like, the, um, the Saurus Guard in to the middle to hold that, and um, probably probably did, like, let into the Maelstrom with that as well. Um, and yeah, ugh. So, so then the knights and the crocs were like stuck in here and the karks just chilling there and he then did enough wounds in the magic phase to just like smoke the kark before I could get a blizzard off because he was he was like very worried about blizzard he was like blizzard ruins my day all the time I'm like yeah it's dumb uh, so he was like I gotta get gotta get killed things with blizzard so he did he did a little play where he um, he did, he actually I think the kark drag was on two wounds and he had an arcane bolt on the little skink guy so the skink flew over and charged the carcadrac and was like i got to you know <laughs> i need i need to do two wounds to him or you're just going to like kill my little star priest with the carcadrac in the combat phase um, and he got it he got the two wounds on the d3 and i didn't make one of the five up saves for the mortals um, and i was i was again i was big sad <laughs> So there were just a couple things like that where it was like, I, I like I was not making five up wards versus mortals. Like if the Karkadrak had made two more five up wards versus mortals out of like the nine that he took that turn, which is totally conceivable. Like the game would have been different. It, there were just so many things here that like could have could have just gone my way slightly more, and the game would have been uh, winnable for me. Um, that's not to say. Like, like, obviously Basil played well, but it was just, it was definitely a game that was, like, close enough that could have, could have flipped the other way, I think, easily. Um, oh, oh boy, thanks Windows 11. All right, uh, but Basil was great. I've, I've seen his name on, like, tournament results from, um, I think he's in the Northeast. Um, you know, not, not local, he traveled for this. Um, so it was good to get to play a very good player from out of town. His list was super interesting and cool. Um, I did not credit nine croc like <laughs> I didn't credit the nine croc scores at all. Like going into this game, I looked at the croc scores and I was like, "How are they ever gonna kill ten Nurgle knights?" I was like, "I'll just charge into them and they'll never do anything." They're on like fours and fours or something, or threes and four. I guess the some some of the guys are on threes and fours and some are on fours and fours against the Nurgle knights, right? With minus one to win. And I'm like, I'm gonna be on a two-up save, and you're on like fours to wound. How are you ever gonna kill me? And then he just he just smokes him in one turn. It's like, what? What is happening? I'm like, I, I guess if you fail eight or nine two-up saves against three damage, two damage jacks, like it can happen. So yeah, that that was just traumatizing in a big old mess. And it was a, it was a good game, but I was just like in shock at how quickly the knights died. Um. Oh, the other <laughs> the other highlight of this game, to to just emphasize how much of a complete and utter wet noodle the Chaos Chariot is, which I've not talked about fourth edition at all on this channel yet. They said they like went through every war scroll and they were like, does this war scroll look like the thing it's supposed to represent and like behave in the way it represents? And I I'm just hoping so so much that the Chaos Chariot goes up like forty points. And can actually do something and like is a little bit scary like i would love for it to be just like 120 130 points and like actually 
be able to do some, like, just just be more on par, even 150 points, right? And be on par with the Stormcast Chariot. Have 12 wounds on a 3-up save instead of a 4-up save. Don't even have to do much more damage. You, it's, you know, whatever. the dam It's at the damage point almost already of the... Uh, eh, no, actually, it's significantly lower than the Stormcast Chariot. But look, anyway. So make it 130 points. It doesn't have to do as much damage, but like be a little tankier, be a little scarier. Okay, is the 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 prime example of this. I and I tell everyone, everyone was like all surprised that I like had a chariot. I'm like, look, it is just it's just for doing tactics. Like it just runs off to the side and gets surrounded, destroy, and then it runs in and charges to get like led in the maelstrom or like helps with my charge three slaves things into something. Like, it doesn't do damage. At best, it, like, goes in and ties up a chaff unit. So, um, this game, he had brought down the, the little uh, Hunters of Wanchi, the little chameleon skinks, like, back here. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want you, like, sneaking up here and taking my point back from me. So I ran the chariot back in, and I charged the chariot into the damn chameleon skinks. And um, I did... I think I did no damage with the impact mortals and I think I did one damage with attacks so I did one damage to the chameleon skinks and then I took two damage back I'm a Nurgle chariot on a four up save and I took more damage back from five chameleon skinks than I did to them on the charge with the chariot so it was just the saddest most pathetic thing that I've seen in a while <laughs> um but yeah, it was a great tournament. Um, guys, guys there at Tables of Towers, guys and gals, always run a um, always run a great tournament. Um, Jacob took best general and got his ticket for Atlanta this year to the World Championships of Warhammer. So big congrats to him. Um, he really wanted to go last year um, and didn't quite make it. Um, so he's already got that locked down. Um, which is great for him. And then Jeremy um, Vessier, who traveled... <laughs> I said I said his last name all quiet, like like I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, which I, I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy of the French last name, um, took overall. So he, I, in my last video, I pointed to his veto where he talked about his list and he talked about like being excited to bring out this well-painted army that a friend painted, I think, for him. Um, that he like never travels with or takes anywhere. Um, so he he went five and zero. Oh, he had a great painted army. Um, I have certain feelings about winning. I mean, he didn't win best painted, but he won best overall. I I have feelings about like having other people paint your armies, but not everybody has the time and skill to paint like a nice army. And like, it's cooler to play against well painted armies than shitty armies. So like, I don't know. Whatever, it's fine. Um, like, if you win a... I don't think you should win a painting award if somebody else painted your stuff, but, like, I don't know. As... He went he went 5-0. <laughs> you know, I can only complain... Can't really complain about him winning best overall. Like, Jacob took best general in the ticket. Jeremy took best overall. Like, it's a cool painted army, whether or not uh, he painted it. So, I don't know. Whatever. I guess, I guess my feelings are conflicted about this. But it is a super cool-looking army. Um, it's a very cool army. Jeremy is a cool dude. He won five games, like whatever. Good, good for him. Well done, well done. Way to come down here and kick all of our asses. Um, and yeah, then um, Matthew Obringer. I didn't actually get to talk to. Him. I don't think I've talked to Matthew. I don't think I've met him. I think I overheard him day one or beginning of day two saying that I needed to lose some games so that he could maybe take best chaos, <laughs> and that's what happened. Um, he had the Archeon list um, and took best chaos, and whatever you can you can see the rest of the standings for yourself um but yeah basil basil took seventh um so good job there emma took 10th so like i can't be too sad about losing my two games to two people in the top 10 um those are good people to lose to and then i ended up in 13th um largely off i mean obviously off the back of day one but like i had i started off with the two big wins um i got my butt kicked by emma but kept kept the last one close so yeah, I ended up 13th out of, um, I think 60 originally were signed up, but 
we had, you know, we had a couple of drops, you can see. So we probably ended up with like 55, 54, probably like 54 at the end of day two. So yeah, yeah. 13th, three and two, it's not the worst. I had I had high hopes after going 3-0 the first day and I let myself down a little bit. Um, like I said, I made a couple, I made a big mistake against Emma and like kind of threw that game and then um, against Basil, like I thought I played fine and it there were just a couple things that like didn't go my way uh, and I didn't have I, I learned some things about Crook. <laughs> I, I, I got some important experience. So good games all around. Um, I am next playing in a team tournament in Massachusetts at the Wicked Dicey Spring Retreat uh, with some friends from down here. Uh, and Jake D. Batista has been bugging me to get on the podcast, and he is our team captain. So I think I'm going to have him on sometime probably next week after lists are revealed and we can talk about team tournament stuff so look forward to that uh sorry this one was a little rough but yeah hope you enjoyed it see you all soon